Hi guys and welcome to Everything Hair. You already know that we're your safe space to talk about all things hair, inspiration and education. Long time, no chat, I guess. But we're here, we're back, we're better. And in today's video, we're going to be going over some hair dilemmas. So some of these hair dilemmas can be found on braiding forums and also some of them are from messages that have been sent to us previously. So keep your messages coming. Make sure to send us an email on everythinghair at gmail.com and we might address your dilemma. Our first dilemma for today is I want braids, but I have dandruff. I wash my hair once a week and condition it twice a week. I like this routine, but I'm afraid that getting at my scalp so much will make the braids messy fast. Any advice? First of all, I want to commend you for being attentive to your scalp care. Scalp care is extremely essential, especially when you have dandruff. There are a few tips that can help you manage your dandruff while also enjoying your braids. And one of them is to make sure that you're using anti-dandruff products so look for shampoos and treatments that are specifically designed to combat dandruff ingredients like salicylic acid ketoconazole and tea tree oil can be very effective in combating dandruff this product will help you reduce dandruff and smooth your scalp Secondly, you want to prep your scalp before braiding. So before you get your braids installed, make sure that you're giving your scalp extra love. Do a deep clean with your anti-dandruff shampoo. Follow up with a soothing conditioner or a scalp treatment. This will create a healthy environment for your scalp under the braids. Also, once your braids are in, make sure that you're continuing your scalp care routine. Use a dry shampoo or you dilute your anti-dandruff shampoo directly on your scalp. You can apply it using a nozzle bottle or even a spray bottle for better precision. Also, you said you don't want to get your braids messy fast, so be gentle while massaging the product into your scalp to avoid disturbing the braids and trying to make it a little frizzier than normal. Another tip is keeping your scalp moisturized. Make sure that your scalp is moisturized look for lightweight oils if if you use oils look for lightweight oils or serums that can help to keep the dandruff at bay without causing buildup applying a few drops directly to your scalp and massaging it can help to maintain your scalp health also when you decide to wash or condition your braids focus on your scalp rather than the braids themselves gently cleanse your scalp and let the shampoo run the length of your braids while you rinse. In this way, you'll be cleaning your scalp without, again, disrupting your braids too much. Lastly, I think it's important for you to listen to your scalp. If you notice that your dandruff is worsening or you, if you experience any irritation, it might be worth consulting someone, consulting a dermatologist or trichologist Persistent dandruff can be a sign of an underlying condition that requires medical attention. Remember, healthy hair starts with a healthy scalp. By taking these steps, you can enjoy your beautiful braids without having to worry about dandruff. I hope that answers your question. Our second dilemma for today is how do you prevent your afro from matting overnight? I've already tried the satin pillows. Edit. He continues by saying that I'm a guy with very coily, frosty hair. And while I do have some length, it's usually in a mini fro if I do a quick pick out. Okay. Okay, so this is a very common issue, especially if you have um, very coily hair. Satin pillows are definitely a good start, but there are additional methods that you can try to keep your afro from matting. The first one is to twist the sections of your hair. So before you go to bed, make sure that you're sectioning your hair and you twist it. Depending on your hair length and density, you can decide to do two strand twists or larger sections. 
Twisted helps to keep your hair stretched and prevents it from tangling and matting overnight. In the morning, you can just gently untwist and pick out your hair to achieve the mini fro look that you like. Secondly, if you have, as you said, you have some length to your hair, you can try using the pineapple method. What is the pineapple method? It involves basically gathering your hair at the top of your head like a high ponytail and securing it loosely with a scrunchie or a hair tie. So we're not tying it tight. We're just making sure that the hair, everything is together. This method helps to maintain the shape of your fro. It reduces friction during the night, which can lead to the matting you're talking about. If your hair is not long enough for a full pineapple, you can do multiple mini pineapples around your head. And yeah, this should be able to minimize the amount of matting you have. You can also try banding your hair or threading your hair. Um, it's a great way to stretch your hair overnight. To do this, you divide your hair into sections and then you wrap hair bands or scrunchies or a thread down the length of each section. This method will stretch your hair and prevent it from shrinking and tangling while you sleep. Keeping your hair moisturized is also very important when you want to prevent matting your hair or when you want to prevent matting. Before twisting or banding or using the pineapple method, make sure that you're applying a leave-in conditioner or a light moisturizer to your hair. This will keep your hair softer and more manageable in the morning. Yeah, you said you already had a satin pillow. Um, a satin scarf or bonnet can also provide even better pr protection by keeping your hair in place and reducing friction. You want to make sure that it's not too tight to, to avoid discomfort and to allow your hair to breathe. Lastly, I think the last tip should be handle your hair gently. In the morning when you're unraveling your twists or re removing your bands, take your time to gently unravel. Use a white tooth comb or a pick to shape your fro. Avoid aggressive combing as this can cause breakage or freeze. So you can take your time to experiment with what methods work best for you. Everyone's hair is different, so it might take some trial and error to find your perfect routine. But this step should be able to help you with um, preventing your hair from matting. If you've not subscribed to today's video, please subscribe to today's video. We have way more. And also, if you did not receive a newsletter in the past week, we already started our Back to Basics series. So if you haven't received a newsletter, um, that means you're not subscribed. Make sure that you're subscribed to our mailing list. The link is in the description below. Let's go over to our next dilemma. The next dilemma says, My mini twists look awkward on me and not like the girls I see on Pinterest and TikTok. I'm not sure if it's because of the density of my hair or the size of the twists. They are also more frizzy than the ones I see online. I'm wondering what I did wrong and what I can do to fix it next time. Would stretching them help? Okay, first of all, I think it's important for us to remember not to compare your hair to what you see online. Everyone's hair is unique and sometimes social media can show a polished or edited version of reality. That being said, um, there's some practical tips that can help you achieve the look you want with your mini twist and we'll go over them just now. The first one is the size of your twist. So one reason your mini twist might look different is the size. If your twists are too large, they might not have the same definition and neatness as smaller twists. So try making smaller sections when you twist your hair. This can help each twist hold better and look more defined. Secondly is the density of your hair. So the density of your hair plays a role in how your twists look. If you have very dense hair, you might need to use more products or twist smaller sections to achieve the look you want. If your hair is less dense, you might want to do slightly larger twists to give the appearance of more volume. Another tip 
is freeze control. So freeze is a common issue. It's something that I am still tackling there, but there are ways to manage it. So make sure that you're using the right products. A good leave-in conditioner and a twisting cream or gel can help your twist stay smooth and freeze-free. Applying a mousse after twisting can also help to set your twist and reduce freeze. Lastly, um, proper installation. Take your time when you're installing your twist and ensure that each section is thoroughly detangled and evenly coated with products before twisting. This might help your twist to stay neater a little longer. Again, it's a trial and error method. Not discouraged if your first attempt doesn't look exactly like the pictures you see online. With a bit of practice and the right technique, you achieve a look that you love. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We have a podcast. If you want to focus more on my voice, click on the link in description to find our podcast on Spotify and Google Podcasts. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's video as usual. We have part two of the hair dilemmas coming. So make sure that you stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.